Hey everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks, and today I'm playing in a vehicle that I can't quite figure out whether I love it or whether I hate it. It is the Tier 10 Soviet Heavy Tank, which has been top of the tree the last month. It is the IS-4. Now, the IS-4 wasn't always a Tier 10 Soviet Heavy Tank inside World of Tanks. If you played the game since the beginning, when it was released in 2011, at least on the European and the North American server, the vehicle was actually a Tier 9 tank and it was one of the best vehicles tier for tier in the game. So good that when Wargaming moved it up to tier 10 from tier 9, uh, it actually still was rather decent, even though they didn't exactly change the statistics of it too outrageously. I remember back in the day in 2011, and I believe for a period in 2012 before they, they changed the line, when IS-4s would have to fight T-34s. Now, I'm not making a mistake here. The T-34 used to be a Tier 9 American heavy tank as well. And it was always just so depressing to fight a, with T-34s against IS-4s back in the day because we didn't have access to gold rounds. The T-34s couldn't really make up for the armor advantage on the hull that the IS-4s had. And quite often, uh, people just weren't really very good at the game back then. People are so much better at the game these days compared to what it used to be. And so having IS-4s on your team was like, woohoo! Having T-34s on your team was like, ew. Unless, of course, the T-34 player knew exactly what they were doing, and then they would go hull down, and they actually had really decent penetration, and they could easily kind of deal with the IS-4 in that kind of scenario. But without physics, without a lot of those kind of things, what you would really, what would really happen is uh, the IS-4 would just drive up to the T-34, lock it in combat, and because there was no physics in the game back then, you couldn't actually push the other tank backwards, irrelevant of how heavy it was. And so you'd literally just sit there, there's no physics involved, the IS-4 would aim down on the T-34 hull with its low profile, and wham, bam, thank you, bam, that would usually be the result of the game. These days, the IS-4 is in a completely different state as to what it used to be, even when it was first introduced at Tier 10. Fairly recently, about a year ago, Wargaming decided to buff this vehicle substantially. Uh, they improved its mobility, and they kind of made its gun handling, I think, less accurate, but just way better at close ranges. So that means that now the IS-4 is meant to be this brawling heavy tank. It actually has horrendous accuracy, 0.42 accuracy to be exact. And so that means that a lot of people struggle with the IS-4 when it comes down to trying to engage at decent distances. But when you just want to deal with your opponents in close quarters combat, whoa, it's a bit of an animal, right? So we're going to go and get in behind the vehicle that used to be the bigger brother to the IS-4, now is an equal brother. We're going to get behind him, put a round into the back of this turret, and we're going to reverse him out from his little campy hole to try and allow our team to go right through the side of the vehicle. You can see this IS-7 doesn't really enjoy this, but has to expose the flat part of his lower plate towards the mouse. And when I say flat part, what I mean is... The, the IS-7's lower plate, it's very well angled, but when it's directly on, it's not actually very good compared to when it's sideways. You should never shoot at an IS-7's lower plate when the vehicle is angled. Then, of course, you should shoot towards the upper hull. And it's no different towards for the IS-4 as well. So in this situation on Himmelsdorf, I thought that this was one of those games where we've got ourselves a tank advantage and we've got ourselves 2,000 hit point advantage, and it should just be real simple. We plow, right? And this is where I love the IS-4. It has 160 millimeters of side armor, which means that you can overangle the tank. Your tracks with 20 millimeters of protection as well do help against high explosive anti-tank rounds. And while your armor is never going to be perfect, by angling at 45 degrees on a vehicle like this, even when the mouse is firing as much gold as I'm firing at him, the IS-4 will quite often come out on top with its meaty 340 millimeters of high explosive anti-tank ammunition. Quite often the enemy vehicles can't quite compete, especially if they're heavies in that scenario. Okay, so a game that I thought was actually going to be very one-sided and we were going to completely dominate is actually starting to look neck and neck. I let the mouse on my team know that I'm going to help you against the Badger because I know just how it feels to have a lot of hit points and there to be a Badger on the enemy team. The Badger will look at the mouse as a big opportunity to finally test its DPM, right? Well, not today, Mr. Badger. As I put a round into the back, I believe locking down the Badger, but the mouse, to be fair, 
manage to finish them off. So maybe they didn't need my help. But who knows? Maybe those hit points that we've saved the mouse there. They've still got 2,000 of them left. They've got half of our team's hit points, even though there are four tanks left. Maybe those hit points are going to be useful. So in this scenario, I was convinced that I wanted to go after the artillery, get the artillery out the game, and maybe also stop the T-100LT from flanking, who I thought would be coming down the west. I thought that maybe the EBR might be trying to flank down and around and try and get up behind us as well. I wanted to secure this western flank, get the RNG out of the game, aka the artillery, and maybe even try and punish this T-100LT. So unfortunately for me in this situation, I was just in an absolute crossfire. So I decided to shoot the T-77 and 200, uh, well, I mean 423 hit points. I should kill that, right? Oh, no, no, apparently you don't kill that quacky baby as you manage to leave a 277 on a single hit point who then kills your 260. What an absolute disaster. I love this tank. I hate this tank. I love this game. I hate this game. I hate this game. After taking those two shots in the side, I'm not going to lie. Can you honestly believe that that 277 managed to go off and kill our 260? And if he hadn't, and we hadn't low rolled on him, then the T-125 would have probably been distracted by the 260 and we would have been in a pretty good situation. So now I'm down to 390 hit points. Not really enough to be able to uh, deal with the onslaught of enemy vehicles. Oh, did I say uh, 400 hit points? No, oh, I meant I meant that I'm now down to 22 hit points. I could get rammed even by a T100LT possibly in this situation, albeit if he's willing to be as suicidal as I was when I was playing the E50M against the mouse the other day. All right, so IS-4 in this scenario is starting to little, look a little bit ugly. We have a T125 with over half their hit points coming around the corner. And so it begins. The T-125 bounces off my side armor. He's actually got a better rate of fire than me. A much better rate of fire than me. The DPM on this tank is a little bit lackluster. But still, I, 2,300 nearly, it's not the worst. Uh, talking about the worst, that shot was pretty bad. I felt pressured. I felt like I needed to just try and get the top of the tank. Didn't want him to dictate the pace of the combat. I actually managed to bounce him. And he tries to ram us. He actually takes 33 damage and deals nothing to us. I'm raising my gun, putting my gun in the gun of the T-125 to try and bait him. Notice there's an RT coming around the corner who rudely interrupts this duel that I'm having to the death with his T-125. It's 22 hit points on the IS-4 versus, uh, you know, over a half health. T-125, and I am trying to go down swinging, boys and girls. We have now dealt uh, 100 damage to this T-1, 1,000 damage to this T-125 while managing to take down the artillery at the same time. And whoa, another little uh, uh, light tank wants to try and interrupt my game here. We bounced the E-5 a huge amount of times, showing you just how good this vehicle is in that kind of brawling situation. Did that T-125 just fire at my wreck randomly? I think he might have been a little bit frustrated with the situation there, probably calling out Soviet bias. Well, I can tell you, um, if you had just decided to fire one gold round instead of bouncing the, the six regular rounds that you bounced on the tank, or even maybe just a high explosive round down onto my hull armor, those 22 hit points would not have lasted. Awful play there by the T-125. And, oh, I was fired up. I was thinking, has that made the difference? Is that going to allow the hit points that we saved on the mouse earlier on in the game to be able to deal with the T-125 and the T-100LT? Well, maybe. It's the biggest, heaviest German tank or any tank in the game now in a one versus two scenario. And when I saw that E5 miss, I was like, oh, yeah, let's go, Mr. Mouse. Now I'm telling the mouse, cap, 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 cap. Because the, if the T100LT gets into the cap circle, 10 seconds before the mouse, the T100LT will win. And if the T100LT goes in the cap circle within 10 seconds of the mouse going in the cap circle, or maybe 5 seconds is a fairer estimate there, it's going to be a draw. So, thank you Mr. Mouse, decided to cap, now puts the pressure on the T100LT, and the T100LT has the like the worst pen of any tier 10 tank, I believe, apart from maybe an EBR 105 or even possibly like equal to it. It's got about 220 millimeters of standard and about 240 millimeters of gold pen. So as long as the mouse uses his armor correctly, there's no chance this T100LT is going to be able to handle them. Okay, well the T100LT just managed to close a hundred meter gap, and the mouse missed. And oh dear, oh, come on, Mr. Mouse. Not like this. Uh, did I say I love this tank? Oh, I hate this tank. Or do I love this game? Or do I hate this game? Oh, Mr. Mouse, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> I hate this game.
Anyway, more IS-4 gameplay, let's go. All right, so round two for the IS-4. I'm gonna be playing this tank with a gun rammer, vents to maximize my combat capacity, and in true quacky baby fashion, we're gonna snap a turbo on it so we can manage to try and contest some of the early aggressive areas. So with a turbo, with the second field mod on this vehicle, we have good ground resistances and we're able to actually claim the hill because a lot of the enemy medium tanks go into what I'm going to call the most stupid area to try and um, play uh, on the mines map. If you're in a medium tank or if you're in a light tank and you don't contest the hill on this map, I, 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 I just don't feel as if you're really trying to give it your all. Because the problem is, if you spawn towards the southeast on this map and you go over to where you see all three of these vehicles on the enemy team are, it just doesn't work if somebody's up on the hill. It's almost impossible to be able to use as long as your team creates a crossfire with one person up in this position and then a few vehicles in a harassment area. Because as you can see, we can just spot them. Uh, they can hang back and just wait and try to get crossfire on us from behind the trees that you see. But more often than not, it's just not really going to work out. And we can actually see that the Char Future 4 on the enemy team firing high explosive anti-tank rounds is actually trying to do just that. We can force the mouse to turn their turret towards us. We can deal with any tanks that they have towards the town. And luckily, the very meaty armor of the IS-4 here is also able to just absorb these high explosive anti-tank rounds too so far from the Char Future 4 in the corner. Because the mouse is now turning their turret towards us, that would mean that either the M103 or the T95, if they would decide to be a little bit aggressive around the corner, they could be able to get those shots in as well. This, ah, we bounce another round from the Char Future 4 there. Unfortunately, it looks like they've dunked about 13,000 credits into our tank and we have now bounced 2,700 damage. And in these scenarios, of course, I'm sitting there shouting that I love the IS-4, right? Um, yeah, uh, unfortunately for every time that you have these kind of scenarios, I feel as if maybe there's just a better heavy tank sitting on a ridgeline. And I think that really is what is key for me to highlight and to admit about the IS-4. For every time that you can manage to get the vehicle into this kind of grindy position, especially with the Kranvag now being top of the tree inside World of Tanks, right? There's a scenario where you're having to try and use your gun depression against your opponents and they might have better turrets, better guns, better gun depression. And then the IS-4 just feels as if it kind of wilts away. It's not the most flexible tank. It's not the fastest tank, doesn't have the best DPM. And unfortunately, while we can see in this scenario, uh, how many how many gold rounds is that that the Char Future 4 has fired us now? It must be at least five rounds that we have absorbed. So that player has dumped about 25,000 credits at our vehicle and it's done absolutely nothing. Uh, who, who was it who even damaged me this game? I took damage from the Centurion 7-1 and of course, a little bit from the artillery. Oh, talking about artillery. Hello there, FV3805. Is it going to be my lucky day after the low roll on the 277? Nope. 398 damage dealt to the artillery, but luckily for me, the Emil too manages to finish them off. And within the first four minutes of this game, by playing aggressively, taking the top of the hill, and just dominating this location, we have dealt 3,000 damage, spotted 2,000 damage, and also blocked 3,800 damage, and Mr. Mouse, obviously frustrated about the fact that their medium tanks didn't contest the hill, and so they had no place to be able to play, has decided to come round to try and fight this location, and it doesn't look like it worked out for them there. They needed to do that early on in the game while it was still winnable. Uh, this kind of a stage? Well, actually, when I take a look at the hit points, this game is still darn close. But you see, when you have the hill, how quickly you can react to the rest of the map. And we are very quickly managing to try and get this back into our team's favor. We lock the A75's tracks down, and because this vehicle has the turret at the front, it actually does very well about poking round corners. You don't have to worry so much when you've got a front-mounted turret about exposing your tank. And remember, this vehicle has 160 millimeters of side armor and 155 millimeters of frontal armor as well. When you are shooting at this tank, be careful that you see these track links over the front, they actually count as extra armor on the vehicle. And so if you have a choice, try and shoot slightly above it. That's of course if you've got a very clean shot into the lower plate. Otherwise, just try and shoot it when it's at its flattest. Or you're just gonna have to load the gold and try and compensate for the vehicle's thick armor. 
One of the reasons why I also despise the IS-4 is for some reason it feels like it carries a very limited amount of ammunition, only 30 rounds. And so even though I only take two high explosive rounds in this tank, I've fired all of my armor piercing rounds. I believe I've only fired one high explosive anti-tank round this game. But now I'm going to have to start, start to dip into the high explosive anti-tank rounds, even against the most lightly armored vehicles on the enemy team. Limited ammunition in World of Tanks just feels as if it's a tax on your credits. And oh, here's the Charfu Tier 4 who bounced five heat rounds off us. Well, looks like they're still firing gold. Uh, they managed to get a couple rounds into us, so good for them on that. But the 121B backs me up. Now we're starting to see that even though the hit points are dead even, yeah, we found out where the hit points are. This is what happens on mines when one team gets the hill. The enemy team just becomes too disjointed. And as long as you don't do anything stupid like poke over a ridgeline and get smashed by a T-110E3, then you can just control the engagement and manage to isolate your opponents one by one by one. So in this kind of a situation, I'm actually quite happy that I have those high explosive anti-tank rounds because they're going to allow me to just butcher this tortoise. Uh, I'm happy I have them left as well and I wasn't firing them unnecessarily earlier on in the battle. I'm thinking, shall I go for the T-110E3? Now let's just deal with what's in front of us. Unfortunately, I don't want to pop my heat round into this wall, but when that tortoise decides to put his vehicle up like that, that's an easy shot for me and whoo! That's a spicy roll, 470 damage dealt. Now putting our damage total up to 5,500 this game and 5,600. 100 damage blocked in addition to those 3,300 damage upon detection and yeah it's it's easy in these kind of close quarters combat scenarios to kind of fall in love with the is4 all over again but again for every time you manage to have these awesome close quarters combat engagements where you feel like you are the super heavy trundling around the map you also have very awkward games where either having to snipe at decent distances, your bad accuracy even misses in close quarters combat because you decide to get rid of your vertical stabilizers to increase your mobility and your combat performance like I have with my IS-4 build. Or, once again, you end up against better hold down meta tanks. I think actually in that moment, I pressed 4-3 and fired a high explosive round at the FV-215B. I think that was a mistake. Was that because my gun was damaged from the artillery? Oh well, we don't have time to talk about that. What we do have time for is, of course, a painted quacky baby transition into the screenshot for the thumbnail at the end of the replay. Oh, this thing. I like this skin. You know, you've even got like a boat on it at the back. Unfortunately, none of the artillery tried to drown themselves this game, so I didn't have to deploy it to try and save them. I, I didn't have to be lifeguard quacky baby today, at least. But the IS-4. This is definitely a tank that I love and I hate equally. It's one of those vehicles that just feels as if it's incredibly good for those kind of brawling situations. It almost feels like there's not much if anything like it in the game for those scenarios. But gosh, is it frustrating for when you have those hold down and those snipey situations. This vehicle is almost like RNG in World of Tanks. This vehicle pretty much is the epitomizes World of Tanks in a way. Sometimes you love it and sometimes you hate it. So an ace tanker for our defeat in the first game on Himmelsdorf, we get a confederate medal for damaging six vehicles that were subsequently killed by our allies. Unfortunately, the T-100LT wasn't one of those. Well played to you, uh, Tomaskov, for managing to shut down the mouse on my team. And the mouse gave it a good go as well with 4,400 damage. Maybe it was just a little bit too much to handle in that round. In the next game, on mines, we get a cool-headed medal for ricocheting 10 rounds in a row. And considering that this is a top tier, that's an unusual thing to be able to get unless there's some kind of pop-pop-pop autoloader shooting at you. In this case, I think it was uh, 10 rounds of heat bounced from Captain Charfu Tier 4 on the enemy team. We get a steel wall medal, and surprisingly, for the 6,480 damage that we blocked, and a high caliber for the 6,000 damage that we dealt. And unfortunately, we did spend quite a lot on heat ammunition, but luckily we penned enough of our AP to still make a decent profit with or without a premium account. So ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was it for today. Really hope you enjoyed this video and let me know in the comments what you think about the IS-4. Do you agree with me that it feels like it's a hit or miss kind of tank? 
or is it all hits for you? And maybe I'm just an idiot. And yeah, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. But if you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.